Greetings guys, finishing up a couple more episodes here and I'm digging into the archives for this one. I think this was like a 2016 hunt or so and this was one of four different shooters I had in this particular stand. I called them the four horsemen and I told myself I wasn't going to be particular and hold out for any uh, particular deer in there of the four. You know there was a couple that was bigger than others but I told myself if any one of those four show up I'm going to I'm going to let one fly and that's exactly what happened. This was the very first sit in that particular stand. I think it was, it was the first week of bow season. It was early on. I waited for that cold front to come in. But anyways, this deer come in and he worked the set and I put an arrow in there and looking at the footage, it was just a little low <coughs> and uh, made a couple phone calls. Ultimately, uh, we made the decision to wait till morning uh, to follow up and find him. And as you'll see, that was uh, kind of a bittersweet decision.
feel it never gets old. It never gets old. Oh. I think it's a good one. I think we're gonna find out. All right, it's the following morning. We backed out last night, and uh, I have to be brutally honest, the shot is not near as good as I originally thought. I think it's still a dead deer, and uh, it's been a long, long sleepless night, and did a lot of consulting with all my buddies, and uh, took myself back to biology class last night, did a lot of studying on deer anatomy, and I you know that sounds elementary and just something like a kid would do, but you know, a deer of this caliber, especially in West Virginia, I just can't help but worry and study and study and worry, and and uh, so anyways, you know, the shot is not as good as I'd hoped. It's low. Um, you know, we're shooting the executioner broadhead, which is a two and a half inch cut. And after freeze framing the video, it does look like the blades opened in a north-south direction, which is going to help on a low hit. You know, the blood was really good. It's bright red. Um, it's pretty much a steady stream. But we backed out after 50 yards there last night. And man, it was a long night. <laughs> <laughs> we're just we're keeping our fingers crossed and hoping and praying but uh got a good friend with me brian tanner who's uh more educated with deer than i am and um so we're gonna we're gonna sit there and, and um, study just a little bit longer go in and see what we can find but the coyotes were on him heavy last night too which is a problem you know i hope they didn't bounce him and run him after he bedded down um they were howling pretty hard just 100 yards below me there last night when i backed out so uh, it's a cold night, probably the coldest night we've had of the fall uh, so far last night. Uh, it's been a real hot summer, hot Indian summer, and it got down to 40s last night. So it should be cool enough for him to lay up and get stiff. So we're keeping our fingers crossed and we're going to get after him here right now. I'm here to tell you, when I talk about down to drops, we're down to drops. I mean, we're talking a speck every 15 yards or so. We're just kind of fortunate that in this overgrown stuff here, they got some pretty serious trails already worrying here over the summer activity. And this, we haven't had a frost yet, so this stuff hasn't died down. So it still leaves these trails pretty visible, but I'm telling you, we're down to drops. I mean, just specks. This is what we're up against here, right here. Uh, we're just talking a speck. I mean, this is, it's been 10 yards since we found the last one. We're just talking a speck. This, this trail, we got a creek bed right over here. This trail comes to a split. Um, I'll bet you $2 to a donut he's, he's turned into this creek here. So that's, that's you know, we're gonna take that, that first split and see. Here's a speck right here, right here. Got horns, we got horns over here. When we said the coyotes were on him early, we weren't kidding, we weren't joking. They've, uh, They've had breakfast already. That's the big nine. Had the had the four horsemen coming to the the bone max all summer. We just started chumming a little corn here the last couple weeks. And uh, we labeled them the four horsemen. We had uh, four good shooters coming in and this is the big nine, and he's he's actually the smallest of the four horsemen. But uh, by West Virginia standards, he's a no-brainer. You don't pass up a deer like this. Good color, pretty color. 
that's a bonus of these early season whitetails. You know, you get some chocolate horns, kind of some golden color sometimes. You know, you get them out of velvet the first 30 days, you got a chance of some good color. Man, I couldn't be tickled. But I tell you, we put our work in for this one. <laughs> I mean, we, uh, I gotta, I gotta tell you guys, I was, uh, I was beginning to really doubt it. I didn't think we could be able to pull it off, but uh, perseverance come through in the end. Brian Tanner's a man, old bloodhound Tanner. <laughs>